you were shown that what you believe to be Christmas in your mind is not really what Christmas is in reality. What if I prove to you that Christmas was surreptitiously subjoined to Christianity with the delusive intent to have those that follow Christianity to inadvertently worship Satan? What if it was shown to you that you've been systematically induced into partaking yearly in this satanic ritual called Christmas and that you are responsible for empowering demon forces and you don't even know it. Sounds, sounds crazy, right? I know. But nothing is ever what it really seems to be. You see, the problem is you don't ask questions. You just go with the flow, right? You've been taught to just do as others do. You've been programmed to go with the program. For example, let me ask you a question. Why do you bring a tree in your house on December 25th? What does that signify? What does it mean? What is the reason you do it? The answer is you don't know. Let me ask you another one. What is the reason that you take that same tree that you don't know why you brought in your house and you deck it with silver, with gold, and various other ornaments. What does it mean? Why do you do it? The answer is, you don't know. What is the reason you put that star on the top of that tree for? What does it mean? You don't know. What are you kissing somebody under a mistletoe for? You don't know. So now, with that being said, what you need to do is sit down and lend me your ear for a few minutes so you can understand why you do these things. You can get the origin of these things and then you can consciously decide if you wanna continue doing it or if you wanna do away with it. Because you have been naively beguiled into worshiping Satan. And I'm gonna show you exactly how Satan infiltrated Christianity with Christmas. The festivals of Rome are innumerable, but five of the most important may be singled out for elucidation. Viz, Christmas Day, Lady Day, Easter, the Nativity of St. John, and the Feast of Assumption. Each and all of these can be proved to be Babylonian. And first, as to the festival in honor of the birth of Christ, or Christmas, how comes it that the festival was connected with the 25th of December? There is not a word in the scripture about the precise day of his birth or the time of year when he was born. What is recorded there implies that at what time soever his birth took place, it could not have been on the 25th of December. December 25th stems all the way back to the beginning of civilization in ancient Babylon. Uh, during the winter solstice, according to mythology, that's the day when the sun began to regain its dominion and begin to conquer the night. Because during the winter solstice, that's the period when the night is at its longest extent throughout the whole year. And the day shown for the shortest amount of time throughout the whole year. So in a sense, there's this type of mythological battle going on between the sun and night. So what succeeded the winter solstice was a gradual increase of the sun going from its lowest point all the way up until the summer solstice where it goes into its highest point. So the pagans back then took that as a sign that the sun was beginning to regain dominance over the night and they began to make deities out of it. So for instance, you have the Egyptian god Horus. 
who was born on the winter solstice of December 25th. Uh, you have the Greek god Helios, who was born on the winter solstice of December 25th. You have the Greco-Roman god um, Apollo, who was born on December 25th. You got the Hindu god Mithra, who also was born on December 25th. And you got the demon of all demons, the deity named after Nimrod, Baal, who after Nimrod's death, he was deified by his mother, Semiramis, and turned and claimed that he became the sun god. He also was born on December 25th. The scholars know and all the elite know that December 25th has always been used as a pagan day to conjure up spirits and demons. It's always been used that way. So now what they did was take the Bible and infiltrate it and then put the name Christ over it and got the whole world conjuring up spirits and empowering demons on December 25th when it has nothing to do with the birth of Christ at all. At the time that the angel announced his birth to the shepherds of Bethlehem, they were feeding their flocks by night in the open fields. Now, no doubt the climate of Palestine is not so severe as the climate of this country, but even there, though the heat of day be considerable, the cold of the night from December to February is very piercing and it was not the custom for the shepherds of Judea to watch their flocks in the open fields later than about the end of October. What the Bible does say is that the, during the time of Christ's birth, the shepherds were outside feeding the flocks and grazing them by nighttime. And anybody in their right mind will tell you that there's no way shepherds are gonna be outside in the dead of winter grazing flock in the blistering cold. The Bible does not substantiate a winter birth because there's no way the shepherds would be outside grazing flock in the, the dead of winter when it's blistering cold. I stay in Florida where they have mild winters and there's no way, even in the winter time, I'm gonna be outside in the middle of the night grazing the flock and I have sheep. There's no way I'm gonna go out there and be grazing the flock. They're gonna have to wait until the morning. At the birth of Christ, every woman and child was to go to be taxed at the city whereto they belonged, whether some had long journeys, but the middle of winter was not fitting for such a business, especially for women with child and children to travel in. Therefore, Christ could not have been born in the depth of winter. And during the time of Christ's birth, a Mary and Joseph had to go back to their city to be taxed. The Romans had set up uh, publicans all throughout the land of Israel to, to have the Israelites come and pay tribute to them. And there's no way in the world that the Romans would have set up a taxation time during the dead of winter. Because back then they didn't have cars and stuff where you can jump in with a heater. People had to walk and had to go out um, however means necessary, but it, they didn't have heaters with them. So in the dead of winter, when it's blistering cold, that would not be a beneficial and an appropriate time to have people come all the way back to get taxed in their own cities. Zondervan Bible Compact Dictionary. Christmas, the anniversary of the birth of Christ and its observance celebrated by most Protestants and by Roman Catholics on December 25th, by Eastern Orthodox churches on January 6th, and by the Armenian church on January 19th. The first mention of its observance on December 25th is in the time of Constantine, about AD 325. The date of Christ's birth is not known. The scholars themselves know that Christ was not born on December 25th. They know that for a fact, that's factual to them. But what, they, what, what happens is the government sets up preachers to go out and tell you some fabricated lie and have you teaching and participating in satanic rituals while they sitting back twirling their thumbs because they know, that, they, they know the truth already. 
And while you over there conjuring up demons, they sitting back laughing, enjoying it, and, and getting power. Constantine himself knew when he set it up that Christ was not born on December 25th. He knew that. He knew that it was a pagan ritual that was passed down from the Babylonians to the Egyptians, to the Greeks, all the way down to the Romans. And that he, all he was going to do was compile it together and have all the Christians thinking that they worship in Christ. When he knew good and well that it had nothing to do with the birth of Christ. The governmental system today knows that it has nothing to do with Christ. But they're not going to say anything. They, they write it in the books, but they're not going to say anything because you are conjuring up spirits and giving power to the demonic forces that rule the earth. How then did the Romish church fix on December the 25th as Christmas Day? Why thus long before the 4th century and long before the Christian era itself, a festival was celebrated among the heathen at that precise time of the year in honor of the birth of the son of the Babylonian queen of heaven. During the time of the Romans, they had a celebration during the same time of the year in December called the Saturnalia, where they would walk around and give each other gifts, sing songs, and have a bunch of orgies, a freak fest. This was, it started out with two days from December 17th to December 19th. Then it was extended to a week. So the Romans of antiquity were already celebrating Christmas before they knew anything about a Christ. The difference is they were celebrating and worshiping the Babylonian god Nimrod reincarnated as Tammuz. They changed the name to, to Saturn. It's the same god. Deified as the sun god. And they was paying homage and worshiping him at that time before they had heard anything about a Christ. And if you know anything about history, Rome is the one who branched off and gave everyone their religion. Rome, that's where your Christian church comes from. That's where your Catholicism comes from. The Protestants, the Baptists, all those stem from pagan Rome. And that's where you get your Christmas from. They were celebrating Christmas before they heard anything about a Christ. They was already celebrating Christmas. And it may fairly be presumed that in order to conciliate the heathen and to swell the number of the nominal adherents of Christianity, the same festival was adopted by the Roman church, giving it only the name of Christ. This tendency on the part of Christians to meet paganism halfway was very early developed. Uh, during the time of the Roman Emperor Constantine, uh, Christianity had already been hijacked already. So Constantine had a diabolic plan to gain converts and to have all people come together under Christianity. But a lot of the pagans of Rome didn't want to come under the, 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 um, the guidelines of Christianity at that time. So Constantine devised a plan and said, you know what, don't worry about it. You like that Saturnalia? You don't have to give that up. We're gonna incorporate that together with Christianity and we're gonna call it Christmas. So therefore we can have the best of both worlds. We can have you still worshiping the God of Saturn, but all we'll do is we're gonna put the face of Christ over it. And when the pagans heard that, they're like, well, we, we're on board then. If we can still continue to do Saturnalia, then we have no problem joining forces with the Christians. Because Saturnalia was the way that Christ, uh, Christmas is uh, celebrated today. That's how large of a scale Saturnalia was. It was, one of the, it was the, the most prominent festival of the Romans back then. So and we find Tertullian, even in his day, about the year 230, bitterly lamenting the inconsistency of the disciples of Christ in this respect and contrasting it with the strict fidelity of the pagans to their own superstitions. By us, says he, who are strangers to the Sabbaths and new moons and festivals once acceptable to God, the Saturnalia, the Feast of January, the Brumalia and Matronalia are now frequented Gifts are carried to and fro, 
New Year's Day presents are made with din, and sports and banquets are celebrated with uproar. Oh, how much more faithful are the heathen to their religion, who take special care to adopt no solemnity from the Christians. Upright men strive to stem the tide, but in spite of all their efforts, the apostasies went on to the church, with the exception of a small remnant was submerged under pagan superstition. Christianity had already been infiltrated heavily by Satan. They already started changing the day of worship. They switched it from the Sabbath day, which is Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, and they changed it to Sunday. The Romans did, another pagan day. The Most High commanded to worship on the Sabbath day, and that's what they did, the Israelites did during the time of Christ. Pre-Constantine, and they end up changing it and adding pagan days to it, which is Sunday, the worship of the sun. Um, they had already started switching up the doctrines. And there was a few good men that were actually left that upheld the actual true doctrine of Christ in its true essence. And after a while, so much paganistic rituals and customs flooded in Christianity that the, the men who actually upheld the original doctrine, they ended up getting flooded out because the pagans already overflowed the Christian uh, church. That Christmas was originally a pagan festival is beyond all doubt. The time of year and the ceremonies with which it is still celebrated prove its origin. In Egypt, the son of Isis, the Egyptian title for the queen of heaven, was born at this very same time, about the time of the winter solstice. The very name by which Christmas is popularly known among ourselves, Yule Day, proves at once its pagan and Babylonian origin. Yule is the child D named for an infant or little child, and its 25th of December was called by our pagan Anglo-Saxon ancestors Yule Day or the Child's Day, and the night that preceded it, Mother Night, long before they came in contact with Christianity, that sufficiently proves its real character. The candles in some parts of England lighted on Christmas Eve and used so long as the festive season lasts were equally lighted by the pagans on the eve of the festival of the Babylonian God to do honor to him. For it was one of the distinguishing particularities of his worship to have lighted wax candles on his altar. The lighting of the candles, when you and your family all getting together smiling, lighting candles, yes, that means something. It's an ancient Babylonian custom, commemorating and worshiping the birth of Nimrod, Satan himself. So people think these customs just popped up out of thin air when they've been around all the way since the beginning of time. And they have overflowed and found their way and crawled their way down into modern day society today. It's the same customs, just being repeated and another name masked over it. Back then it was Babylon, today it's masked with Christ. It's the same exact custom, same ritual, same custom, same worship, same exact God. The Christmas tree, another paganistic custom and ritual that stems all the way back to ancient Babylon. It's the same exact God that um, worked his way all the way through and made his way all the way up to Christianity. It's the same exact deity. Most Christians don't even know that the Christmas tree is in the Bible. God condemns dealing with the Christmas tree. It's an abomination. He tell you not to deal with it. Any Christian that has read the Bible, the reason you don't know it's in the Bible because you've never read the Bible. Most Christians never read the Bible. Because if they did, they would know they're not supposed to be dealing with a Christmas tree or any other type of tree putting ornaments and putting presents underneath it. You would know that it was an ancient custom and a heathenistic custom and a paganistic custom and a satanic worship and Luciferian doctrine. Jeremiah 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, 
O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. The Christmas tree, now so common among us, was equally common in pagan Rome and pagan Egypt. In Egypt, that tree was the palm tree. In Rome, it was the fir. The palm tree denoting the pagan Messiah as Baal Tamar, the fir referring to him as Baal Barith, the mother of Adonis, the sun god and great mediatorial divinity was mystically said to have been changed into a tree. So early Rome uh, denoted the palm tree as Baal Tamar and the fir tree as Baal Barith, which when you understand anything about religious origin, you'll know that these are all the same gods. They stem from the, stem from the same gods back in ancient Babylon, the worship of Nimrod, reincarnated after he died when he was deified by his mother Semiramis. He became known as Baal, and then became known as Baal Zebub or Belzebub. And when you read the Bible, that's the highest ranking demon in the demonic forces. Luke 11 verse 15, but some of them said, he casteth out devils through Belzebub, the chief of the devils. He's the head chief demon of all the legions underneath him. So when you have this tree in your house, the Christmas tree, you dealing on a high level of satanic worship, whether you know it or not. You dealing directly with Satan himself by participating in that satanic ritual that you do yearly. You conjuring up spirits right there. You, you, you conjuring direct, he, that's, that tree is the direct porthole to Satan himself, the bells above. The Christmas tree, as has been stated, was generally at Rome a different tree, even the fir. But the very same idea as was implied in the palm tree was implied in the Christmas fir for that covertly symbolized the newborn God as Baal Barith, Lord of the covenant, and thus shadowed forth the perpetuity and everlasting nature of his power, not that after having fallen before his enemies, he had risen triumphant over them all. Therefore, the 25th of December, the day that was observed at Rome as the day when the victorious God reappeared on earth, and held at the Natalis Invictus Solis, the birthday of the unconquered sun. Now the Yule log is the dead stock of Nimrod, deified as the sun god, but cut down by his enemies. The Christmas tree is Nimrod Redivivus, the slain god come to life again. So the Yule log is representation of Nimrod being chopped down, his death. Then you put the Yule logs into the fire. Most people don't do that part of the ritual because most of you have, don't have a fireplace to put it in. If you got money in your own place and an actual fireplace, those are the ones that might partake into that ritual. Then after that Yule log gets burnt, then on Christmas day represents the reincarnation of Nimrod, which is the tree the Christmas tree with the presents underneath it because the legend has it that after Nimrod was reincarnated, he'd come in the, in the nighttime and leave presents underneath the tree. So it's a whole ritual that's being done and you don't have any idea why you're doing it. You're completing a whole satanic ritual and you have no idea why you're doing it. You're getting socially programmed to partake in this demonic custom and you have no idea why you're doing it. 
So the hypnosis starts right after you finish at the end of November. And you get bombarded with all type of uh, Christmas carols and Christmas movies and lights, different colors. And it's very obvious that Christmas has nothing to do with the birth of Christ. Because every store you go to, you go to Walmart, Walgreens, all you're gonna hear is Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. What does that have to do with the birth of Christ? You're gonna hear Santa Claus is coming to town. What does that have to do with the birth of Christ? And then on top of that, they mix in a small portion of religious belief just to mask it over and to cause confusion and make some people believe like, okay, you know what? Maybe it does have something to do with Christ. When at all, all that is is a delusion and a disguise to what they have you doing already. They building you up to finish, to, to complete this ritual at the end of the month. So they start all the way from November with the hypnosis and you like a, 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 um, a, a walking zombie. They implant it in your mind and working on the, and, and, you, and sending vibrations and signals into your brain waves. And get you prepared to, 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 to participate in this ritual. And, you, and, and, you, and everybody gets all hyped up and ramped up to do it. When you don't have any idea you're about to participate in a satanic ritual on a very high level. And Christians talking about they're going to put the Christ back in Christmas. How are you going to put the Christ back in Christmas when Christ was never in Christmas? That's another delusion. Have people thinking that they're doing something right. Trying to have people rationalize in their mind for the reason that they're about to go do this ritual. Well, maybe I can, I can just say it's the worship of Christ. No, it's not the worship of Christ. It has nothing to do with Christ, and it's self-evident. When you look on the TV, you're going to see Santa Claus. You're going to see Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. You're going to see a snowman. What does any of that have to do with Christ? Like it was mentioned before, Constantine mixed paganism in with Christianity. And eventually, paganism overtook the whole doctrine of Christianity. It flooded the Christian doctrine, so there was no more remains of the actual origin of the Christian doctrine. That's essentially what happened. And now you left doing satanic worship. That's how clever Satan is. He done slid his way all the way into Christianity and nobody would ever take the time to look and say, you know what, let me find, you. everybody looking for Satan somewhere else. Maybe Satan over here. When Satan got his home base and headquarters right in Christianity. He got everybody deceived. Revelations 12 verse 9. And the great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan which deceiveth the whole world. When he operating right there in Christianity, no holes barred. He got you celebrating. He, he got you celebrating Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving, Easter, um, Valentine's Day, all Babylonian customs, satanic worship, rituals on a high demonic level. Now, and with that said, most people are still going to go and participate in that ritual. With everything being said, and they're gonna to try to rationalize it in their mind and make an excuse and try to say, oh, well, I'm doing it because of the family. No, you're not doing it. You're doing it is because they've been tampering with the brain waves and they make it to where you think that you have to do this ceremony. Or people gonna look at you crazy. They start softening you up with Christmas carols. Everybody start acting funny around the Christmas time. All of a sudden, everybody's in this giving mood and nice and want to give hugs and kisses. Why? Because they socially and they're psych psychologically programming you 
to act that way and to give, give, give. You, they, they preparing you slowly to get ready to partake in this ritual that you will do at the end of the month. December 25th, faithfully, you're gonna go, you're gonna sit down with your whole family and open up presents and you're gonna be doing it in the name of Satan disguised as Christmas or the worship and the birth of Christ when it has nothing to do with that at all. Everybody getting all nice and friendly for the holiday season. What about the rest of the months? Why nobody's friendly then? Because Christmas is on a high demonic level. And the elite know that, and they got you partaking. Like I said, most people are still gonna go do it, and that's fine. I have, if you, listen, if you wanna go and wor uh, celebrate Christmas and worship Satan directly on a high level, I have no problem with that. That's your prior, uh, prerogative. I don't have a problem with it, but the most high God, he has a problem with it. Because you can live it up all you want, have as much fun, crack open as many gifts as you want, decorate as many trees, put as many stars on the top of the trees, kiss as many people under the mistletoe all you want. You can do that for your whole life. That don't got nothing to do with me. But once you enter into the grave and your spirit goes back to the most high, you gotta stand and face him yourself. And I can tell you right now, you don't wanna face him and you've been celebrating and worshiping Satan. Hebrews 10 verse 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Because you're going to have to answer for it. You're going to have to sit there and answer for it. Every action and every deed that you've done, you're going to have to answer for it. I'm not going to have to answer for it. i got to answer for myself. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he have done, whether it be good or bad. So with that being said, if you're gonna continue worshiping and celebrating Christmas, so be it. But to those that have an ear, let them hear. And you'll come out of that. And you won't be part, a partaker of the loophole in the system. And you'll come out of the matrix. So with that being said, now you know exactly what the origin of Christmas is and these rituals that you're participating in. And you know exactly how Satan infiltrated Christianity with Christmas.